And I know, I'm sure if you come to this clinic, you've heard plenty about vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is very, um, very closely linked to inflammation in your body. A study came out this week showing that, that your vitamin D levels and your, and your chances of getting RA, rheumatoid arthritis, are actually higher. And same thing with, with MS and whatever else. So the amount of vitamin D you're getting is really important. Most people in this country are deficient, if not extremely deficient. And um, it's, it's something that's really important to get tested and get looked at because it's probably the easiest, simplest, cheapest thing that you can do. Um, much better to talk to a doctor than to try supplementing yourself is that b because at, at some doses vitamin D can be toxic and for most people if they're taking the over-the-counter vitamin D it's, an it's going to take them an awfully long time to get where they're trying to go whereas a lot of times for, for some people the prescription strength of their vitamin D is very low is much more appropriate and so that's certainly one to, to chat with a doctor about because it, it's easy and it really makes large differences in terms of cancer and fatigue and joint aches and, and pains and risks of other diseases. Vitamin D is a vitamin, but it is also a, a, a hormone and a pre-hormone, so it affects so many other processes in your body. The other thing is that, you know, we also evolved in a time where we were getting more sunlight. We, we leave our houses, it's dark, we go to work, we are not getting any through the windows, even if we are lucky enough to have a window. And then we go home and it's dark. And, and the sunscreen. And so between all these different things, we're not getting it from the sun the way that we used to. There are some thoughts that the recommendations for D are going to be bumped up, and I certainly hope that's the case. But even so, it sounds like even what they want to bump it to it is somewhat conservative. So especially if you're working with a doctor, it's, it's perfectly safe. It is important to have a doctor monitor because there are some conditions where it can be problematic. It's rare, but it's still important to look at and to be cognizant of. Um, but a lot of when the original recommendations were set were to avoid rickets, were to avoid frank deficiency. Um, whereas now we understand that avoiding, you know, around 50 to 80 is where, and, and there's some people who say 100 to 150 is where you're lowering your risk of cancer and MS and lupus and fibromyalgia and so on and, and all, so on and so forth. And it's such a long laundry list. But the whole thing is that our recommendations are old. Um, the vitamin D research has just really come out in the last, oh, five or six years, and it's really only hit the mainstream in the last year. So when I was in school, which really wasn't that long ago. We learned you got vitamin D from food, too much could be toxic, and it was something you really should actually be careful about. Um, whereas we're understanding now, most people I see who haven't been supplementing are somewhere around, especially people with chronic fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Lyme's, whatever, especially GI issues because people with Crohn's actually tend to be lower because it's absorbed in your gut, and so if you've got stuff going on there, vitamin D is usually much lower. Um, so with vitamin D, uh, you know, the 400 we used to think was normal, but most people are, I see are around 20, 25 without supplementation. According to the NIH, we don't hit um, toxic range until 200. So that's a big fat range. Um, one of the first studies came out in terms of supplementing vitamin D and the rates of flu. Um, and they showed that, you know, you give people vitamin D and the rates of flu go down. So it's, it's really neat because there are very few things that are that simple, that easy, and do really make a huge difference, but vitamin D is one of those.